Oh, hello. This is my video response to Angry Video Game Nerds review of Castlevania, Castlevania 2, 2, Simon's Quest, for the old school NES. While I love his videos nowadays, the first time I saw this review, I mean, I was pissed. pissed, 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 pissed. At the time I recorded this video, running a search for Castlevania on YouTube would automatically bring up Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, by the angry Nintendo nerd, which is what he used to go by. When I first saw it, I was excited because I hadn't thought about it since I was a kid, but then... This game sucks. Wait, what? There's no way he just said that. This game sucks. Well, I finished watching the review anyway, and it turns out he had a lot of good points. I mean, I remember some of that driving me nuts as a kid, but I still had fond memories of it. Was it just warm, fuzzy nostalgia? Was the game as bad as he said it was? Well, I had to take a trip down memory lane and revisit Transylvania to be sure. Yeah, this game was awesome. I know a lot of people who played the first Castlevania, but for some reason never returned to play the second one. I don't know why that is. The original Castlevania was the first game I ever bought with my own money, and it was worth it. Eagles dropping hunchbacks on you, skeleton dragons coming out of the wall, epic boss battles with Frankenstein and Igor, the Grim Reaper, and of course Count Dracula to name a few. It's an undeniable classic. Needless to say, expectations for the sequel were high, but did it live up? Well, they pretty much ditched the formula of the original and went experimental, starting with the story. Step into the shadows of the Hell House? I don't know what they're talking about, there's no Hell House in this game. The instruction manual sheds a bit more light on this bizarre tale, and it goes something like this. At the end of the first game, you fought Dracula. Apparently, he put a curse on you through the wounds he inflicted before you defeated him. Then one day, a beautiful maiden warned you with a soft voice that you had been possessed by the Count's curse. Or something like that. The only way to destroy the curse is to find the five body parts of Dracula and burn them in his castle. Let's do this. Playing it as a kid, I was instantly confused when I couldn't kill the first zombie. I was still in the whip everything in sight mentality from the first game. Turns out that zombie is an old man that you're supposed to talk to. At seven years old, I was like, you mean I gotta read? Not one of these games. I read enough in school. This is my free time we're talking about here. Well, you do gotta read. A lot. And play detective while you're at it, because a lot of the townspeople that are supposed to be helping you are liars. I'll get back to that later. So you're reading to find clues, you're reading to buy stuff, you're reading riddles. Read, 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 read. But when you leave the town, this is what I'm talking about. The music is incredible throughout the entire game, and the graphics aren't bad either. This is the Castlevania I expected. You're whipping skeletons and fishmen like in the first one, and it's fun. The Angry Video Game Nerd's first complaint about the game was the day-night mechanic. I remember the first time it turned from day to night when I was a kid. I was in the middle of whipping a wolfman, and I was thinking, great, now the enemies are talking to me too. I think the main complaint about this is that it takes 10 seconds for the transition, and you can't skip it. Considering this happens every 3 minutes, and the game takes around 6 hours to complete, you'll be reading this a lot. It is pretty frustrating, but time stops when you're in a church, store, house, or mansion, so there is some relief. Despite the nuisance of the 10 second transition, the day-night mechanic was pretty innovative and added a sense of urgency to the game. Need to be healed? Rush to the church before the zombies come out. Need to upgrade your weapons? Hurry to the shop before they close and you get whooped. He also said this wasn't very realistic. In real life, you don't have to stop and a box doesn't appear. But that'd be pretty funny, right? I will say, Castlevania 2 was a very ambitious game and has influenced some really great modern games like The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Where Castlevania 2 failed, Zelda nailed the day-night mechanic. No lengthy transitions and the stronger enemies coming out at night while the town's closed made for more immersive gameplay. Anyway, back to Castlevania 2. Even in the towns during the day you aren't safe because you could fall into water, which brings me to Angry Video Game Nerd's next complaint, you can't swim. Well, I understand what he's saying, you're supposed to be this legendary vampire hunter who defeated Dracula in the first game, but water is your worst enemy. Well, the fact is this was extremely common at the time this game was made, there were a ton of games including Castlevania 1, where you died when you fell into water. Was this just a lazy challenge? Not necessarily. I guess the water could have just as easily been spikes or a pitfall or something. The point is that it's an obstacle, and it's not really important for you to be able to swim. Even some more recent games like Grand Theft Auto Vice City, a game that was made not even five years ago, you die when you fall into water. In Vice City, among other games, water just serves as an obstacle or border. And hey, I guess not everyone can swim, right? However, some games are just being lazy. In the Angry Video Game Nerd's hilarious review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, he pointed out how ridiculous it was that the turtles couldn't swim against the current, which is really lame because in the second level you're completely submerged in water and you can swim against the current just fine. That's an example of a lazy challenge. I think water as an obstacle in Castlevania 2 was actually a pretty good way to keep you on your toes. Nowhere in this game is safe. The Angry Video Game Nerd also said he hated how many hearts it took to buy items and when you die three times and get a game over, you lose them all. This was frustrating as a kid, but when you get a game over, there should be a penalty or else the game would be too easy and you wouldn't care how many times you died. Of course, this forces you to do the same thing over and over, which does get old, but most RPGs and similar games are often rooted in monotony. He also dissed the Flame Whip, which I always thought was pretty cool as a kid. I mean, it's hard to obtain, so when you finally get it, you're psyched. I love that sound. Anyway, you have to collect Dracula's five body parts, two of which are nail and ring. Clearly not vital organs. How about brain or lungs? Whatever. You find these parts in mansions across Transylvania. When I got to the first mansion, I died a lot. What are you supposed to do here? 
Oh, maybe a glitch, right? Nope, the platform's invisible. You have to equip the white crystal to see it. So I guess that first zombie had something useful to tell you after all, but it's pretty vague what you're supposed to do with it. So you're working your way through the maze-like mansions, or hell houses, maybe, and you fall through the floor. This complaint I totally agree with. The invisible pitfalls are a lame challenge. The only way to avoid them is by trial and error, watching where the enemies walk, or the preferred method, throwing holy water. You pretty much have to throw it every step of the way through the mansions if you don't already know where the pitfalls are. It's kind of like the game Super Pitfall, where you have to constantly jump around to find vital items. It's just ridiculous. Your first instinct when you buy the holy water is to use it as a weapon, but don't. You'll be using it through most of the game. This sound will echo through your head for eternity. At the end of the mansion, you'd expect there to be a nasty boss like in the first one guarding Dracula's body parts, but you'd be wrong. There are two bosses in the game besides Dracula, but it's not even an event. There's no boss theme music and they're really easy. Plus, you can just walk right past them if you want. You're gonna want to kill this guy though if you want to beat the game. So there's this orb sitting there that you can't touch. I thought it was a glitch like in the beginning of the mansion, but it turns out you have to buy an oak stake from this dancing merchant and throw it at the orb to open it up. How did I figure this out at 7 years old? This. In 1988, it was pretty much the only way to come close to beating Dracula. Which brings me to the Achilles heel of the game, the unfair challenge. Sometimes you just don't know what the hell house you're supposed to do. Don't get me wrong, I don't need a game to hold my hand the whole way through. I love a good challenge, I mean, I'm not a complete idiot. See, I can figure stuff out for myself, but this is ridiculous. What am I supposed to do here? Oh, Neil, okay. Oh, and I gotta equip the blue crystal. Hi-ho, you didn't expect a secret passage. You don't say. The thing with the tornado is pretty goofy, but I always thought it was kind of cool, despite the fact that you'd have to be anally ridiculous to figure it out on your own. So as I mentioned before, the townspeople lie. They're pretty much the only in-game help except for the books you can accidentally skip over in the mansions, but their hints are bogus. Let's try a few out for fun. Rumor has it the ferryman in Dead River loves garlic. Hey, that cost me 50 hearts, you ungrateful ferryman. I'll see you at midnight on the river bank! Ooh, now we're getting somewhere. Stood up. Get a silk bag from the graveyard duck to live longer? I'm sure they're missing a comma between graveyard and duck. There's no way this one's gonna... I've heard theories that this is because of a poor translation from the original Japanese version to the English one, but supposedly deception was actually built into the game on purpose. Probably to sell guides. Pfft, it's shameful. Angry Video Game Nerd also thought that the password was too long, but I thought 16 digits wasn't too bad. Metroid and Kid Icarus are terrible with 24 digits and upper and lower case, but for me it's still preferable to the cartridges that have batteries to save your game. Those things suck. I remember being like 20 hours into Final Fantasy when I turned it off without holding reset and it's gone. The enemy list castle at the end was a bit lazy, but I guess it sort of gave it a creepy atmosphere. So you're gonna burn the five body parts and you're done, right? Wrong. Dracula definitely doesn't look like Dracula. He looks more like some kind of Nazi pilot skeleton or something. I guess that's the result of being comprised of nails, rings, and crappy body parts. Yeah, Dracula's pretty easy if you attack him right from the start, but if you give him a chance, you're done. There's three possible endings. You get the worst ending if you take a long time and or use too many continues. Black and white, not very satisfying. You get the best ending if you beat it quickly and use next to no continues, and that one's pretty cool. It alludes to a sequel at the end with Dracula's hand coming out of the grave. It's pretty tight. The middle ending is terrible, and somehow it was the first one I got when I was a kid. It says that even though you beat Dracula, you couldn't survive your fatal wounds. This was pretty traumatic for me as a kid. I was depressed for the rest of the day when I beat that game. So Nintendo is re-releasing their old games on the Virtual Console for the Nintendo Wii. Right now you can get Castlevania 1 and 4, I'd recommend them both. Eventually they'll release 3, which is wicked, and of course they'll release 2, so the question is should you buy it? While I thought I wanted to recommend it despite its downfalls, I can't unless you've played it before and you already know what you're in for. If you're really interested in playing it and you don't mind following a guide verbatim, you might want to give it a shot. So making this video, I got a chance to play it again with my friend Reyes who had never played it before, and he actually liked it even though he kept saying, Seriously? I got a chance to interview him while he was playing to see what his thoughts were on the game. So Race, you're playing some Castlevania 2 there, I see. How do you feel about that? What? <laughs> sure, I don't like this, I got... Oh, man. So you like it? Mm. Nice. So there you have it, Castlevania 2. Some people loved it, some people hated it. But if you're like me, you're a quarter of a century old, and you live in your parents' basement. Dinner time, come on up! I'll be right up!